Unboxing Now or Later, and welcome to Helion's Hub with me, Helion, along with... Faisum Drakir! And, uh, yeah, this first game... This, well, the first game... This game for tonight that we'll be starting on is a bit of a finicky one, because, well, it's a, it's a game that's... <laughs> It's only seven years younger than me, uh, and it came out in well in two thousand. So yeah, that would say a thing or two. And apparently, it was only released in Europe. Most likely because uh, this company was a German one, and a lot of times they only release stuff in Europe. Well, German companies that is. Yeah, sunflowers. I'm pretty sure probably nobody has ever, no, well, nobody in the states at least, have heard of these. Probably some other companies called a sunflower, but uh, not this one. And yeah, the game we'll be starting with is Technomage: Return of Eternity. It doesn't show the subtitle here. And yeah, you can already tell this is an old game because it only has start, load, and exit. Oh dear. Do you see them on charm? Yeah. Yeah, I, I really do like this symbol here, which is basically a sword and a bow combined with, well, a bit of extra flair. Oh, it's a bow, all right. Or I presume it's it's a bow or something like that. Um, before we start further, uh, the game currently it, it it absolutely refuses to work in a windowed mode. Even though on my end there is a top bar over here, and I presume not even with uh, DirectX wind uh, DirectX window, which I've used, which I used with uh, Beyond Good and Evil before this, and some other games as well. So at the moment. The game OBS is capturing my for my monitor or my primary monitor with the a bit of the top and sides cropped out because it isn't a perfect. Oh, uh, it's a bit early for the credits because yes, that's where <laughs> that would have started up the credits. So yeah, uh, the, the way I got it to work is by basically figuring out oh this. Uh, Force this to fill in the box I've you know, the, the bounds I've described here will well force it to fill up the whole box I've described here. Uh, one small thing though, this game is on OBS. It's currently running in 4x3 resolution. On my end, it is better getting stretched. So you all and Rakir will actually have better resolution for this. Yay! <laughs> what the? And here we go. Whoa, what in the world was that? An earthquake or a nightmare? Wild monsters attacked me, and the earth shook. Press the action button to scroll through dialogues or to end them. Use the appropriate buttons to rotate your field of view in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. This should help with getting your bearings. Oh, bye-bye, fourth wall. <laughs> So, uh, impressions now that you've finally been able to see that uh, whole cutscene? 
I think I've seen the concept uh, the trailer before. You recommend to watch it. But yeah, I must have forgotten that. I still I still weirded out with the design of the riding animals and sound like a horses. <laughs> yeah, they and are also, definitely used as pack animals. Yeah, and people forget. Yes, we saw the dolphin get it eating, so the ribs and meat and all. And just behind my head, it says this game is for Yeah. Three <laughs> years and up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, the Germans were hardcore even in the zeros, <laughs> and I should know, I live right next to them. But yeah, we are playing as Melvin here, our little uh, elf dude, who, now that I actually think about it, for some reason his face is now reminding me of Carlton from Prince of Bel-Air for some reason. Uh, you said elf, I noticed something weird then. At first here I noticed he had pointy ears, but in the cutscene it like, looked like he had human ears. Hmm. I've mostly skipped that since... Oh. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Mouth left mouse button is going to be our action button that I clicked on the cabinet here, found some coins, Q and E turned to cameras, WSD as well, the most basic standard stuff, and yeah, El Melvin is actually, or all of the characters, and they in this game are actually sp sprites. But we can still turn our camera freely. Read the sprites? No, uh, sprite and sprites are 2D by a very by their very definition because a, sp a sprite is a 2D image. But it it, it just changes huh. the sprites depending on the angle. The environments though are 3D. And yeah, to speak to a person, stand directly in front of them and press left. Yeah, left mouse button. Uh, let's see. We are having our controls limited a bit, it seems. Good morning, Melvin. Have you finally woken up? Oh no, that was no dream. I would say it was a slight earthquake. I noticed it too, but at least it got you out of bed, you sleepy head. You're like your father. Sleepiness seems to be a typical steamer characteristic. <sighs> I'm really happy I managed to teach you a couple of dreamer skills as well. But now you should get on your way to your Uncle Rissen's druid cell. Your work awaits you there, and I'm sure Rissen knows more about the quake. And yeah, this is Melvin's mother. And that little spark of that, that was us getting some experience, I believe. Uh, yeah, here we have our inventory. And yeah, we have we got four experience. We're four percent experience to the next level. We've got five coins. We've got these attributes here. With nothing we can mop. The game says it's right here. The place for your weapons, the place for your magic spells, the place for your defense equipment, and the place for your mystical items. Hmm. And yeah, then we just have an inventory here with a map, a quest log, and save and load. Your basic... <clears throat> your basic uh, RPG mechanics. Hmm. Uh, can we loot anything from this? Various wines of different vintages. Okay. It is too um, well for you to drink, Killian. <laughs> well, Melvin is old enough. He did have a yeah. He did. Yeah, he does have stubble for beards. <laughs> but yeah, this is a game I grew up with. Though I must admit, oh, I do not one hundred percent know uh, it by heart like I would with uh, Beyond Good and Evil. Or, close to 100%. Objects like cabinets and clocks can be examined by standing directly in front of them and pressing the mouse button. Get some more coins. And that a lot of sounds in this game are probably going to sound familiar to other people because yeah, some of the <laughs> I'm I'm not sure if this game would be considered the first or the probably among the first that a lot of stock sounds were used. 11 in the morning. <laughs> Melvin, you, I'm not even I'm that lazy most of the time. <laughs> you are in Dreamer Town. To locate your position, pr uh, quickly press M. You can close the map by, by using M again. And apparently my avatar is having its, the, his eyes closed a lot of the time. It might be because my 
glasses are still rather broken. Tomorrow I'm going to go... <coughs> Tomorrow I'm going to the optician to get my eyes scanned. Or calib... Uh, the test that determines how thick you need your glasses. Because it's, uh, the pair I'm using currently are five years old. So it is time to redo the test. And these are basically your checkpoints. If you die, somehow you appear right next to these again. Wait, is this your house? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you, you could say that Melvin is a hobbit. Yeah, there's an actual term for this kind of house. Uh, uh homes, I think. Earth houses, like it's half buried. Do yeah, it seems out to be a lot of on the ground. What the Can heck? Can you do me a favor and take these books back to the library? Yes. Thank you. That's really awfully kind of you. And when you've taken them back, I've got a small reward for you. Uh -huh. Yeah, Miss Sengarn. <laughs> yep. Quest item, a related object, is automatically stored in your backpack during your journey through Gothos. You will receive many different quest items. Sometimes you must give them to a particular person or use them in a particular situation or in a particular place. To use them, you must examine the item or speak to the relevant person by pressing while well, selecting them. The quest item will then automatically be used, provided it is the right place to use it. You do not have to select quest items manually from your backpack. To check the contents of the backpack, open the character menu with I. Yeah, a, a very good little uh, convenience thing, huh? I'm yeah, sure there uh, were games after this that didn't re do that. W what's with the little one? Yeah, she's just running around playing. I would much rather go and play at the Dragon Fountain. Surely everyone except me is there already. But I've got this stupid cold and my mother won't let me go out. What's it say? It sounds like she has a cold. <laughs> Like an action. Don't tell me they actually wait. They decided to. We have a cold. Let's record it. <laughs> I, I'd hope not. And I'm pretty sure the I only thing is sort of 3D on Melvin is the freaking cape. <laughs> or at least it move. It's the only thing that seems to move. Sorry, I think it is the only actual 3D item on him. <laughs> Still impressive. Dreamer School, education by Master Salek, uh, Salek, every type of lesson possible. And, yeah, like I said, I, this was one of the games that I grew up with. So a lot of stuff in this is, has been, uh, was rather formative for me. Uh, though I can't, so I, I, I'm going to be pretty biased with a lot of stuff in this. Uh, so I can, I can tell if a lot of the voice acting is going to be good and or what absolutely do you think horrid. I'm doing here? Warming my backside? Well, the truth is that I'm doing a detention. Unfair, isn't it? Anyway, it gives me the chance to learn a lot. Shall I tell you what I've just found out? Okay, Sabrina, the... Early years witch? <laughs> Steamers and dreamers cannot live together in one place. If only because all their interests and customs differ so completely. For example, no dreamer can stand the terrible racket steamers make with their loud voices. Steamers are used to speaking very loudly due to the constant machine noise. Anyway, there is the old traditional rule that forbids us to live with them. Yeah, steamer and dreamer uh, are going to be terms that are going to be coming up quite a lot for a while. Melvin, you're my last hope. I Only was just going to take the whole class on a trip to collect and study the local herbs in the forest. But uh, since the forest around Dreamer Town is no longer safe, I'll have to hold my lessons here in the village. But my herb collection is incomplete. Uh, could you fetch me some shade fern leaves? Mm, yeah, we'll be picking up quite a few uh, side quests whilst we're here. Nothing of interest here. This entire place is going to be pretty much the tutorial for this game. There's even a complete guide of how to complete it in the manual of the game. And while this is for my physical copy, so I do have the manual. 
just not uh, at hand at the moment. I have to ask, is Melvin half-breed or something? Uh, yep. Okay. He is the so-called, or as the uh, kids in town call him, the uh, steamer dreamer. <laughs> it sounds like a very funny term, if you just think about it. Okay, that, for once that sounds like something a pair of kids would come up with. Yeah. And usually when I hear something that's a post what, that tweet, what kids came up with as, as a nickname in some game, usually it sounds like so dumb that not even a kid would, would be think. Yeah, you were cutting up a bit there at the end. And I'm guessing since oh, the game said, didn't, uh, we didn't find it ourselves, it, the game is pointing uh, it out I said, uh, uh, oh. I said, uh, there's been many cases where games have kids make up names, but they're so stupid that you can hardly believe kids would think of it at all. Yeah. Tell me, you half-dreamer, are you trying to pull an old man's leg? I've got far better things to do than answer your stupid questions. Okay, Gramps. Every class when a voice actor's here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to withhold my own opinions on it because I am, of course, completely biased at this game, but so far it has been sounding pretty decent to me. Yeah, so, what I say is I hear many but you could consider today to be veteran voice actors. All right, I, not, I'm a lot less good at re you know, recognizing stuff like that. Um, hmm. Da -da -da. Yeah. So, okay. I was just double checking the box of the game because I have that behind me. That yeah, it is a German company On that the made this. Notice, the library is closed as we're stock taking. If you have any questions, please speak to the librarian, Master Librarius. <laughs> well, uh, his parents certainly had a plan for him. What the heck? Hello, Mel. I'm just counting my stock. Some of my volumes are still missing, and I've decided to reopen the Keeper of the Word only when every last one of my loaned books has been returned to me. Oh, good! Here, at last, are Mrs. Sengan's books. If that's so, then I can finally open the library again! And there we go. One side quest done. Uh, one hopefully not booty call to collect later. Let's see. Why dreamers should never concert with steamers? Would you like to learn more about this law? There are many different versions and interpretations of the old rule, passed on from generation to generation by word of mouth, that dreamers and steamers must never live together or marry. The most important aspect of the rule is that dreamers and steamers must not have children together. Uh, well, that's been broken. Since these children would apparently become agents of evil, bringing the fury of the gods upon all who live near them. Well, that's... Uh, charming. What? Let's see, is it just going to be the entire... Yes, the entire side of this thing is just going to be this one single book. It, it feels like this may take a little bit inspiration for the Bible. Like... Yeah, it was a bit forbidden for ancient souls to... mate with humans due to the... gave birth to giants. Yeah, the Nephilim, right? Yeah, Nephilim was a variant of giants and they were... very much known for causing a lot of trouble. Let's see. The history of the dreamers and the steamers. Would you like to find out more about the origins of these two peoples? After the Great War and the few who survived fell out with each other. However, they did agree that it was too dangerous to ever allow the power of magic and the combined might of the machines to be used together again. Therefore, the High Council resolved that each individual could choose whether his future existence should be based on the use of magic or technology. Thus it came about that this ancient and wise people became divided into dreamers and steamers. Hey? Would you like to learn more about the architecture of the Dragon Fountain? The stone from which the fountain is made is Langos Marble, which comes from far away in the high mountains in the east of Gothos. Uh, 
Randagon, uh, Ran Rangadon, the famous dreamer architect, created the unique form of the bowl in the dragon's heads using only his magic powers. The dragon's heads are likeness, like, 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 likenesses of the dragon's set who have once lived near the Hunsak Valley, where they guarded the secret of the stones. That, that word looked to sound the sweetest. Uh, sound like Hunsak, dog thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting uh, valley name. Let's see. Would you like to read something about the outcome of the last star pushing contest? Last weekend, the 42nd round of the unofficial star pushing uh, championship was held in the eastern part of Gothos. The tacticians just beat the rescuers in a gripping and bitter battle. The tacticians have now won 29 times, while the rescuers have only uh, 13 victories. It was a cheer for the tacticians and sporting applause for the rescuers. May the magic powers of Gothos remain with you always. Hmm. I think I might have skipped out on most of these because I do not have any remembrance here. Oop. All about the ferns and the shade fern. Would you like to know, learn more about it? We were asked to find some, so we might as well learn up, up and read up on it. The fern. Uh, 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 again, I've mixed in both ground. The shade fern, named Lahara, in the old tongue is a very rare plant, which flowers only very briefly. It prefers to grow, as its name suggests, in dark, damp, and shady places. Long forgotten, the shade fern is now back in fashion due to its medicinal properties when used in the druid's herbal kitchens. It is said that in a drink, it is particularly good against the growth of nasal hair. <laughs> what? Uh... The second travel report by the courageous dreamer adventurer Serendoran after Steamer Town. Yes. Although my first journey to Steamer Town turned out to be a little disappointing, I soon felt the urge to travel again. And so I set off once more, uh, though this time in the company of several young dreamers. We had barely passed Steamer Town, however, when the others became afraid and turned back. So we continued alone and spent more than two weeks exploring an enormous forest. Not a single person that I meet there, and apart from a few very uninteresting small animals, I had no one uh, to talk to. Then suddenly I came upon a huge dragon, bigger than anything I had seen before. I had to fight for my life, but experienced as I am in combat, I used a spell that frightened the dragon and made it run off. You see there is danger out there, so stay here in Dreamer Town. This is the best place to be anyway. Uh, okay, this is the first journal. One sunny spring morning in the year of the cold vines, I left Dreamer Town thirsting for action and adventure. Only a few of us have ever left Dreamer Town, and hardly any made it as far as Steamer Town. This isn't really surprising since the city itself is truly hideous. It lies at the foot of some hills in a valley. It is large and dirty due to the air pollution created by all the steam engines and other machines used there. The city's inhabitants, the steamers, were, are clumsy, lazy, comfort-loving people who spend their whole day tinkering about with machines using their tools or splashing about in engine oil. So you can see why I wouldn't recommend anyone to travel there. Well, if they're constantly tinkering, then they're not being lazy, right? Yeah, a bit of contradiction. And yeah, this little shine here gives away that this is important. Because that's a shade fern. You and stole someone's shade fern. Yeah, we just took a we just took a, a bit of it. <laughs> so now we can cross over here and give the, turn that in. Uh, I will say that not all of this game is going to be open world-ish like this. A lot is going to be a, a lot more linear. The Shade Ferns. You've brought it with you. Now, at last, I can begin my lesson. Here, take a little chalk for it. Take care to keep it dry in your backpack. Sometimes, chalk is very useful for marking the way. I have written a very significant book about the history of the Dreamers and the Steamers. I consider it extremely important that people should know the past of their own race. And my books are also as exciting as crime thrillers. Uh, would you like to have a summary of it? Okay, that's... that's a claim. 
Many centuries ago, something really terrifying must have happened on Gothos. Today, no one knows anymore what it was exactly, but many old books suggest something quite terrible. Clearly, the ancient peoples of Gothos only managed to save our world from the ominous threat of destruction by joining forces in a huge war effort. But discord soon broke out among the survivors of the battle. What was the cause of the catastrophe, and what could be done to avoid it in the future? There were rumors of treachery, but who had betrayed whom? Finally, the people split into two camps. Those who saw a solution to all problems in the power of magic became the Dreamers and founded our city, while those who wished to rely solely on their great knowledge in the use of mechanics, technology, and machines became the Steamers. From that day on, the two peoples went their entirely separate ways. Oh. Yeah, you have a backpack, we already know this. Some of the items can be used whenever you like. If you use an object, it disappears from your backpack. Usable items can be presents or items you have found. Some can also be bought from the shock traders. Uh, to use an item, move the cursor onto it and press a mouse button. Oh, to... I missed the last bit, but it was something like to leave something. But yeah, with the chalk, we can mark an arrow at our feet, facing to the same direction as Melvin. Okay, that's kind of nice. Yeah. This is where your experience points are collected. Uh, you receive experience points by defeating opponents, solving riddles, or carrying out tasks. When this tube is full, you will receive a top-up, which means that a certain number of these points can be distributed at will among Melvin's four character values. You can increase Melvin's physical strength here, the greater the level of this value, the stronger Melvin becomes when fighting with conventional weapons. Melvin's intelligence influences his ability to use magic spells. If you apply points to this value, Mel's mana supply is increased and he can use spells more often. In addition, the magic is more effective in that it causes more damage and or lasts longer. This is Melvin's constitution, a value having a direct influence on his physical resistance to attack. The higher the value, the more hit points Melvin has, and the harder it becomes for his enemies to defeat him. And mysticism denotes Melvin's ability to use very ancient and powerful special objects. These tools are often very useful. Additional mystical abilities also become available. These abilities are stronger and more effective the more points you add to this value. To be honest, I don't think I've ever put any points in mysticism because I'd never understood what the hell any of it would actually do. <laughs> Certainly I've got a problem. Rats. Every cursed night they creep around in my cellar and gnaw at everything. I just can't sleep with all the noise they make. Or at least not without a strong sleeping draft. It's really too stupid that I have no weapon to get rid of the vermin once and for all. I recognize that voice actor as well. And he usually does that, the uh, Billy Bob voice. Yeah. He seems to be very... I think over the years he actually got better at it, even. <laughs> uh, you'd hope so in the 20 plus years since this game released. <laughs> okay. The Golden Swallow, Dreamer Town's in. Oh, hello there. Hello, Melvin. Have you been to the Dragon Fountain today? Mr. Saris is wandering about there murmuring something about eyes and roses. I don't understand what he's saying. I can't tell if he's got the actual kids well. or people who do kid voices. That person is adult by now. And that sound like a, but I, think, I think that person usually do women and men voices as well. And usually in that speech matter, sounding so... How would you describe the voice? Nasally. Not only really, kind of like almost only interested and posh, you know, a weird way. <laughs> well, hi there. I'm Hernt, the landlord of this wonderful establishment and ever at your service. I have plenty of good food and clean, comfortable rooms to offer. 
Just have a look around the rooms yourself. Oh, um, Mel, it's you. Sorry, I didn't recognize you at first. <laughs> oh, but could you do me a favor? With Another a nose one. that big, I'm not surprised he didn't recognize us. <laughs> probably, he's probably practically blind in any way he I'm looks. Not... Oh dear. This, you know, this is another veteran voice actor. <laughs> Here are five gold coins. Take them and buy a bottle of dark distress wine from the local wine trader for my guests. Wait, what? Yeah. Dark distress. What kind of name for wine is that? A fantasy name. And yeah, since this is an inn, there's of course going to be some guests. Who am I? Don't you know me? I'm the famous adventurer Sirandoran. My name and my famous acts are known throughout Gothos. And another yes, veteran voice actor. that he's just Oop. a drunk. Yeah, that's another veteran voice actor. I've not heard him in a while. And this might look a bit familiar. I'm terribly sorry, but our caravan was ambushed on the way back here yesterday, and I've lost everything but my life. So I haven't got anything to sell at the moment. Now there's nothing else for me to do than sit down and wait for the next shack caravan. And to make things worse, the braggart next to me is really getting on my nerves. He's always talking about his wild adventures and battles with dragons. If he's a hero, then I'm a dyed-in-the-wool schemer. Do you want to know the truth about him? It'll only cost you five gold coins. Just ask me whenever you've got gold and time to spare. And uh, yeah, that's a this is a bit of the shake with the shark. Uh, they basically always well congested or something. They, there's something with their mouths underneath the masks. Uh, Will you pay me five gold coins for the information? How many they have a code in this game? <laughs> I've often met Siren Doran, as the fellow is called, in the Steaming Horse, the inn at Steamer Town. He told his adventure stories there, too, about dangerous journeys over the sea, on a dragon's back, a dragon. <laughs> Have you ever seen a dragon? He would wet himself if he really saw one. The sad truth is that Siren Doran is just a terrible show off. Yeah, I'm going to see. Take... Was... Go on. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. You I... first. I think the, I think I still don't see the reason why all of them seem in specific from the trailer have this mask on their face. It's yeah. probably if you they did not have you see or just a little snot hanging out. Yeah, one of my guesses is that the shark basically their nose and mouth are connected or something. I'm that's speculation, but that's one of my guesses. Yeah, I think it's more like they they they're probably reacted to something in this area that makes them have a bit of hay fever. Uh, no, every single one of them talks like that. Oh dear. Oh, lucky me. Tonight I'll see my beloved bunny again. Oh, I wish it was already dark and we could meet right now at the playing field. <laughs> Nothing for us to do there at the moment. That name and uh, that icon with a uh, shirt slipping off. Uh, yeah, I think we get the picture what's going on there. Yeah, uh, give me a sec while I swap these around. There we go. That feels a bit better for me. Again, people, 
this game is apparently for three year olds and we have sexual innuendos. Okay, there's God, that kid again. God damn it, Sunflower! <laughs> Everyone seems to be gathering at the village well for the latest gossip and rumors. Why don't you go to the village well? I've heard that everyone's gathering there. Okay, that's not the voice actor not heard in a while, both of them. No. Okay, I think I'm, the reason I'm not heard in a while is either they've retired or... Uh, yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Now we can jump. So for some reason, not once we're moving. That's odd, because I'm... Or is it not just... Wait, if I hope... No. Okay, something is odd. We, I'm pretty sure that we're supposed to be able to walk and jump at the same time, but it's not really responding to that. Um, what if I put that to space as a secondary? There we go. I'm guessing it must not like getting into... <clears throat> it must not like getting... Uh, yeah, key combinations from both the keyboard and the mouse at the same time. Possibly. Well, since you are already here, you can do me a favor. Can you take something to my daughter Larissa? Here's a sandwich. Please take it to Larissa. She must be playing somewhere near the Dragon Fountain. Hey, okay, another voice I can recognize, though. This one is probably the roughest dialogue I've heard of her, so I guess this is a bit of a start of her career. Yeah, again, this game is 20 years old. Bloody <laughs> uh. heck. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing in this first stream we'll be going through the city, through through Dreamer Town, which they call a city. Have you been reason. to the village well? Something seems to be going on there. Mr. Sandham? Uh, what, what was this village called again? Uh, <clears throat> it's Dreamer Town, and, well, the steamers right. have Steamer Town. All right, then I'm let me show sure, you. Uh, I'm pretty sure a city is supposed to be bigger than a town. Um. Yeah, I think there's there's a notice also... on the door. Melvin, as I no longer wanted to wait for you, I have gone ahead into the wood to collect mistletoe. I will be back at about five. Your Uncle Rissen. Oh dear. Oh. We screwed that up. And uh, what I was to say was, well, for a moment when I was to uh, pick up some chocolate and show it a foot, while I show it a foot, he then said Tumor Town. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm guessing that's I'm guessing that would be the town where the steamers send everyone stupid enough to try and work with uranium Oh, it could be that Bacchus and I had a few too many drinks yesterday I think I slammed the door and somehow I must have shut Bacchus in the side room Now, unfortunately I can't find the key anymore I do remember, though, that I stumbled through the bushes near the crumbling city wall before the guard steered me home again. Uh... No yeah, more wine for you. <laughs> uh, I think he has more than plenty left. <laughs> well, you're not getting any either, Helian. <laughs> and... Yeah, he's over there, <laughs> having the time of his wait, life. Wait, wait, did you see what he had in his hand? Yep. <laughs> and we'll see it better once we find that freaking tree. Okay, crumbling wall. Let's see. I remember parts of this game, but as I said, not everything of it. And yeah, we can we can wade through shallow waters, but deeper waters. Oh, what a fool I am! I'm going to meet my beloved this evening, and wanted to lay the whole world at her feet like a goddess. 
but I haven't got a suitable present for her. Oh, help me. Love makes you blind and clouds the senses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we said it at the same time, I think. <laughs> But yeah, he's the one we heard about uh, complaining about roses and As such. As you can see, I'm very busy, and I'm hungry. Can you give me the bread roll? I'll give you something for it. There's a bit of butter on the roll. Ugh. Oh well, what the heck? It's better than nothing at all. I'll give you my balloon for it. It's gone down a bit anyway. Uh, don't you use your butter? <laughs> Your connection is breaking up. I did understand that, though. Test one, two. Three, four, five. Okay, you're back. Why don't you go uh, to the uh, bar and hear the news? Okay. Uh, what I was going to say before he interrupted me there, I'm going to start keep an eye on the, the voice connection. Okay. Just to see if it's on my end or his. I must say I do like the ambience and music of this game, but then again, I am heavily, heavily biased for it. Yeah, I can see that. It is a very pretty game. Yeah, 40 time. This is Ooh, around yeah. the same uh, time that uh, Giants Citizen Kabuda released, and it had a similar uh, color scheme-ish. Uh, um, like I think they're released in the same year. Uh, Hello, uh, but here's our steamer dreamer. Look, I I'll conjure up a balloon for you. It's a childishly simple m magic spell. Can you do it? Probably not, huh? I, I, I assume half steamers like you would much rather mess about in engine oil. <laughs> well, anyway, if you it should by chance manage to conjure up a, a balloon, then you absolutely must show it to me. Uh, well, st st Steamer Dreamer, have you managed to conjure up a balloon? You were going to say? <laughs> no. Don't worry, I was asked, what the heck are we looking at? <laughs> it's the kid that's doing a handstand. And probably shattering his neck for the rest of his life. <laughs> oh dear. Wow, a balloon! It must have been v very difficult for you to get that. Especially since you can hardly do magic. Hmm, I, I think I'll be kind and, and give you a couple of experience points for your achievement. <laughs> really? <laughs> Bye again, Port Wall. You'll be sorely missed. Then again, you did need a bigger room. Okay, nobody here. Oops, something going on upstairs, I think. All right, let's keep continuing along the wall. As is very clear, the game wants us to go to the well. But that will progress things a bit. And hello there. Why are you still here? Why don't you just go to the village well? There's a rumor that a messenger is on the way. How the hell do you people actually even know that? Okay. Good question. Ah, there's the key. We have found a silver key. It is now in your backpack and will be used automatically when you find a locked door with a silver lock. Each, can, can, each key can only be used once. Pretty simple stuff. All right. Ooh, grapes. And now we've done a full 180 of the village. You know, 183, full 360. Yeah. And hello there. Everyone's on the way to the village well. Something big seems to be happening there. 
Yeah, we really do need to get there because time is actually progressing when we're doing tasks here. So once we find uh, once we find a clock, we can take a look at it. Last that we saw, it was eleven, and I'm not sure how, by how much each task progresses time. Ah, <laughs> I see you have the key. Would you be so good as to free Bacchus from his prison? <laughs> You sure he wants to be freed? Okay, I think I'm going to change these back again. Because now I'm getting now I'm constantly being confused between inverted and not inverted controls of the camera. Go on. Leave me a line uh, <laughs> alone. This wine is all mine. And I'll drink it all myself. I'm pretty sure that Bacchus is the Roman name for Dion Dionysus, the god of wine. It is. You? <laughs> you want a velvety pig? <laughs> no, surely you mean a sweet glue. <laughs> well, all right. I've got a bottle of dark distress here. You want to buy it? Five gold coins, please. There you are. As always, if you stand around for a while, you'll find out that it turns to vinegar all on its own. Myself, I am patience personified. But what about Hurt, the landlord? I'm not really sure if that means that you need to rush over to the inn to deliver it, but... Yeah, let's just head over there all the same. Uh, so you can no, free missions in this game then? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that most don't ha most quests don't have fail states. Well, except for dying yourself. Uh, let's see, where is the inn? Right across. But the... <clears throat> the well is on the other side, so let's avoid that for a second. So we don't trigger that cutscene. Okay. Now, let's see. Three in the afternoon. Okay, and once we hand this in... Very good. You've got the wine for me. Look, I'll give you some gold as a reward. Uh, how much did he actually give us? <laughs> Two gold coins. <laughs> Cheapskate. There, there, Helian. You, you, you want a hug? A cookie? Muffin? And now it's two. Now, well, now it's four a.m. So there is, should be one more thing to do before uh, five hits. What? Okay, I'll be saying again. Never mind. Hey, you people, come over here and listen carefully. I've come to warn you. Warn us? About what? Everyone uh, it came coming. over us last night. At first, it was just a slight tremor, but then it became a violent earthquake. It could have reduced a whole mountain range to rubble. Hordes of terrible creatures suddenly emerged from the depths of the earth and destroyed whole sections of Steamer Town. Five of us were actually killed. We should never have let Ferna's child into our house. Come on, let's throw him out now. Well, yes, that could be a cause. Uh, perhaps it's the wrath of the gods, or perhaps it is the powers of the underworld wanting to destroy us. Who knows? And he just gets the fuck out. <laughs> well then, Melvin, I think it's finally time for you to leave us. But I haven't done anything wrong. Why me? I... I've never been to Steamer Town. Shut your mouth, you little steamer. We'd be better off without you anyhow. Now stop exaggerating. What am I actually accused of? I'm innocent. 
What do you all want from him? He's innocent. You can't just throw him out. Be quiet, Carissa. If we say he's guilty, then... And you are just a bunch of idiots. Please, everyone, calm down and just think for a moment what you're asking. Only the High Council of the City is authorized to issue judgments. We won't be able to pass judgment on this matter before morning, but it will at least be a just one. Therefore, young Melvin, you should go to your uncle's house and stay there until then. This time you were lucky, Melvin. But next time... What the heck? <sighs> Melvin, please come here. I wish to speak to you. I am truly sorry, but look. People who are different from all others often have difficulties being accepted by the majority. You had better go to your uncle and await our decision. And try not to worry, Melvin. Have faith in justice. I shall follow your advice, High Council. All right, Melvin. Just don't give up hope. A reasonable you know, authority figure in a video game? <laughs> it must be a son of the apocalypse. <laughs> Wait, what? I've seen them many times. Yeah, but recently they've been... Recently, I think they've become more and more rare over time. Possibly. Why aren't you at your uncle's house? Or is there something important you absolutely have to do? If you don't find a particular place in Dreamer Town at once, use the overview map. Open the character menu and use the directional buttons to scroll to the map symbol. Press the action button to open the overview map. To close the map, just close the character menu. Yeah, this game was Hello. on the consoles as well. Hello, Fofol, my old friend. During the game, you will receive new objects that you can find in your character menu. Don't you want to notice uh, get the yoke, didn't you? <laughs> uh, okay. And who are you? Hi, Mel. I'm here in the Guardian of Time. I strike the bell every hour on the hour. It's four in the afternoon. I'm not sure if I've actually heard it ring. Okay, wait, hold on. Hold on. He has an extremely... Fancy title for just ringing a bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think we've been everywhere. We do have some other quests still. Uh, clear yeah. the rats, but we don't have a weapon. Fetch Mrs. Sarah's a present for his fiance. We can't do that. So off to the uncle. It is that way. Again, this should not be for three-year-olds. <laughs> Especially with how much wine they have in this town. That, uh... If I remember right, you're meant to go to your uncle's, aren't you? Yeah, uh, yes, he, yes, he, he have also the old uh, racism going on. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that Mr. Sanjim there could, well, go clean his balls with sandpaper. There's a notice on the door. Melvin, as I no longer wanted to wait for you... Okay, still one hour. Um... Okay, I think I remember now we can find... I think we can find a rose somewhere. For, uh, well, the law for Romeo. And, yeah, some... It's probably become, in, become a bit noticeable, but... There are seams that you can very clearly see through every here and there. I'm pretty sure that's been in the game since the very start. And while this wasn't really the time of patch, 
Patch patches. Yeah, they, they did sometimes. On some games, they could give, send you a extra CD or something to fix it. True. Or you had to go to the website later on to... What the... Okay. Right. Uh, some games, you had to go to the website to get the patch to download it from them. Yeah. Uh, in in 2000, the internet was still just coming up. There's nothing you can yeah. do for me at the moment. And even then, it was kind of iffy, since not everyone knew it. You can patch mm. a game like that, and we knew how internet in the past was. Yeah. <laughs> a very uh, crackly with its, <laughs> its dial-up tunes. Yeah. And if I think about it, it was only computer games you could uh, patch for a while. Since it was impossible for uh, consoles. Though in those games, it was very much more important to make sure the games were in good order as possible. Yeah. Hmm. They, they only had that freedom now to be able to patch a game after release. Let's see, I don't think these are... No, those aren't pushable blocks. Hmm. How... I think we always... I think many people may have seen Angry Video Game Nerd and other such uh, YouTubers to know that there are exceptions to the rule. True. <laughs> now, where the hell is that... F I'm pretty sure that we're supposed to be able to find a rose somewhere. Just, where is the bloody thing? Oh, grapes! Oh, grapes! Let's Wait, why would you have... Why would you want gr grapes growing on your defensive walls? Well, the walls are more here for... Yeah, the, the Dreamers aren't really a very mobile people. So it's more you know, probably in keeping people inside as much as keeping things out. And yeah, we've done a full lap again. Where is this bloody rose? Have you checked the gardens? Yeah, everywhere is a garden here. Hmm. I could grab the manual and look in there. Uh, could it be on the inner side of the town more? There's the timekeeper. The well again. Um, hmm. Let's see. What other things? Clear the rats. Patch a present for his fiance. Yeah, we don't have any weapons, so we can't do the first. And we need that rose for the second. We don't have any other quests to complete. Maybe you need to go, uh, follow the uncle and you find the rose in the woods? Uh, no, we can't leave town. Oh. Hmm. Melvin, don't get so upset. Just because a few people react a little aggressively toward you, everyone's a bit nervous at the moment. Just be yourself, stay friendly, and help whoever you can. Perhaps Rissen also has some good advice to give you. Okay, at least she's supportive. Where is that bloody rose? Hmm. I'm pretty sure we've covered every se uh, square inch of this place now. Or, well, the, s the squares are in the grounds. <laughs> Very visible here and there. Yeah, and also, I noticed, I noticed something about the st streamer, the steamer that came earlier. Yeah. He's still got round ears. Yep. Basically, the, basically, it's elves and dwarves, but not entirely so. With, well, the dreamers what? being the magic tall people, and the steamers being the shorter, more rotund engineers. Sure. He looked huge! I was to say he was a human at this rate. Yeah, technically they both are human. 
uh, both species. But yeah, they they were sh shorter compared to the dreamers around. Where is this freaking rose? Don't tell me the game somehow glitched and hit it or something. Okay, I'm grabbing the manual. Okay. There we go. 20 year old piece of paper. Let's see. Don't snap your neck. Installation, World of Ghosts, Game Controls, Quick Start, Main Menu, Game Menu, Character Menu, Objects, The Eight Worlds, uh, General Playing Tips, General Notes and Credits. Okay, page 37. That should be where it starts. Oh no, it's, it starts right here on page 15 with the how to get through this. Uh, let's see, Sanctus Larissa, Larissa, books for librarians, uh, herbalism lesson, Golden Swallow, a rose for Miss, uh, Mr. Sarius. Uh, calling on Miss Sarius, the dreamer, whose books you have taken. Oh yeah, we need to go back to her for that. She will give us the rose. I thought it was, I thought you were supposed to find that. Now, where was she again? There we, right here. Have you taken the books back to the library? Good. To thank you, I'm giving you this rose. Oh, Melvin, don't blush. <laughs> there we go. Two thousands dialogue. Uh. Okay, let's go bring this to Romeo. And, yeah, it, it isn't too noticeable with how... Well, fast or slow, depending on your interpretation of it, Melvin moves. But just out of sight is the uh, <clears throat> is the rendering distance of the game. And you can see it at some points when you turn and move, where you can see a bit of a green mist or something. But yeah. If you don't go to your uncle's house as you've been told, then I'll tell the guards. Okay, you little shit. How about I shove you up the freaking fountain's head? Elliot! Elliot, it's just a kid. I've heard rumors that the High Council has ordered you to go to your uncle's house and stay there. Well, be off with you! Well, so much for being supportive. I think she is supporting you. Oh, she noble don't want you to get it worse. Haven't you a rose you can spare me? Noble sir, my heart is full of joy. Here, take these five gold coins for your pains. And now, be so kind as to leave me alone, so that I can count the hours until I see my beloved. And I actually did hear the clock there, or the clock, the, the bell ring there. It's just not very obvious. All right. Uh, yeah, she would have something snarky to tell us again. Um, okay, the, we need to be at the complete opposite side of the village. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, we what do you think of this game so far? An hour very in. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm very curious. Yeah, like and I said, it's... not everything of it is going to be as open worldish like this. But we'll, you'll see. Now yeah, I'm using in interesting in stories so far. And I'm finding it very pretty. For its time, certainly. But it has a, it has a style. Oh, yeah. They went very experimental. Like, okay, what, what do we have? And they tried their best with what they had to make it look good as possible. And definitely made it very unique. Yeah, they, they probably saved a lot of processing power on making the character sprites. And if, if you notice, uh, Melvin's head moves independently from his body for a little, for a bit. Yeah, like, the, the early games that did this, though, most of them that did this looked a little bit more uh, rough. Yeah. So this is a you. very polished version. Hello, Melvin. When I was in the forest this morning gathering mistletoe, I heard some very strange sounds. 
It sounded as though wild animals were breaking through the undergrowth. Unfortunately, though, I couldn't make anything out. Probably for the best, then. <laughs> I heard about the Council's order. It could be that the judgment will affect you severely now that everyone seems to be projecting all their fears onto you. Nevertheless, we must keep a clear head and not neglect our everyday obligations. I urgently need a compass from the cellar. Would you fetch it for me? Wait, you'll need this copper key to open the cellar door. Copper key. Is copper really good as a key material? I don't think so, but they do keep using it in, uh, in fantasy games. Actually, I don't think I've seen many fantasy games use it. Like, I have seen it, yes, but I think it's rare, actually. Sometimes you have to use lifts to move from one building level to another. Simply stand in the middle of the lift platform, the lift will start moving automatically. Let's see, untidy desk. Nothing of interest. And there we go. And over here, oh, to jump over onto an object, press the right mouse button and directional buttons, but we already know that won't work. So we just grab this key with the space bar. A dagger, your first weapon. Select weapons, open the character menu with I and use the directional buttons to move the cursor onto the first tube, strength. Press action to display all your weapons. Use directional buttons. You, uh, using the directional buttons, you can scroll through the weapon list. The weapons displayed in the window. Uh, the weapon displayed in the window is the weapon you are currently using. Confirming your choice with action. Uh, and yeah. What do we have here? That's just the instructions again. Oh yeah, now we're armed. Uh, maybe not that dangerous though. Another healing potion. Okay. Sorry, we won't want to be careful. What, what did you pick up? I heard you got armed. <laughs> a dagger. And also a, ma a healing potion. Okay. Wait, you, you have a dagger? Yeah. And a cloak. <laughs> so now it's time for some cloak and dagger work. <laughs> We're doing people. Thanks for watching. This kind of crate can be broken open using a close combat weapon. Simply select the weapon, stand in front of the crate, and press action. And that's any the one that can people, be pushed. Any movement of people, heal him with... harm himself with the dagger. Or the co cloak. This crate can be pushed. Place yourself directly in front of the crate and keep action pressed down. Now the crate is marked and can be pushed by pressing the directional buttons. You can either push or pull uh, crates to let go have to create simply release the key. Okay, now your eye opened. Yeah, I, I, I think... I think I've said this before, but my my glasses are partially broken, so they won't really stay in place on my face anymore. And yeah, I think that's confusing the... <clears throat> I think that's fusing... No, confusing the uh, the program that I'm... That's using my... That... <clears throat> That's uh, projecting the avatar. Likely to. I was surprised that you read several sentences without a single eye open. <laughs> but you only have one eye, so. Or do you have both eyes? What? Let, let, let's. You should try see what's under the eye patch sometime. It's a mystery to all. <laughs> <laughs> to fight an opponent, press the action to draw your weapon and attack. It seems that it is. Yep. It seems that we're also having a bit of an issue here with as with the jumping. Well done, you defeated your first opponents. And as any good adventurer, your first opponents are freaking rats. Uh, let's see. Action. Left control. Is shift something at the moment? No, so we can just put that as the secondary for now. But you see the rats, slime, goblins. Yep. Um. <laughs> this is an end of level opponent. You must defeat him in order to progress. The tube on the right shows his life energy. So 
Something's wrong. Would you like to save now? Yeah. Save Wait, save. there. Yeah. Right. Go on. Uh, yeah, the game lets you save in front of big bosses like this, just in case. Yeah, I think it was around this time quick saves it started to become a thing. Uh, let's see if the mouse button is going to be a bit unavailable. Mm, maybe I should play this with two hands on the keyboard instead. So if I ship, change that to num enter. telegraphs his attacks of course and there we go yep. and yeah there's the compass that must be the compass uncle Rissen meant <laughs> and with that we can just backtrack through all of this. Most of the time after we're face, you know, we face the boss, uh, it'll be the end of the level as well, end of level opponent. But since this one is a bit more free, this first level is more free roam, we have to, well, roam our way back <laughs> ourselves. All right. And congrats, Ilian. You're getting a giant roasted rat for dinner. <laughs> well done. In the meantime, I've spoken to your mother we're both convinced it would be better for you to leave Dreamer Town and live for some time with your father in Steamer Town. That means you must leave the city unnoticed by the guards. Your mother has been waiting for you at the Dragon Fountain since sunset. Keep the compass and the dagger as presents from me. Good luck, Mel. Very wet. Yeah, we're getting the hell out before we get thrown out. We're freaking lynched. And yeah, that took seven hours, apparently. I, I, I know you can be slow sometimes, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. uh, now there's oh, rats Sak out. There was a Sakura... Wait. Sakura leaves? Um, there is still one person that we can help. Clear the rats from this, uh, Mr. Vagsnack's uh, cellar. Door is locked. Um, where was he? It's probably one of the unmarked houses up there, so let's head that way. Instead of heading to the fountain and ending the level. Oop. There's the guards. No, they, this isn't the stealth section or anything. They won't chase after us if we get near them or something. And the, the, the rats are easy enough to deal with. You carry a weapon, hmm? Would you be so kind as to deal with those troublesome rats in my cellar for me? Here's the cellar key. You're very elf. trusting of someone walking in with a weapon. An elf with that accent sounds so out of place. I'll probably be using. Oh, there we. <laughs> I'll probably be using the camera to turn a lot, so that might be a bit disorientating. Okay. Yeah, we filled up the we filled this up. So now we can select some stuff to upgrade. Though everything has already gotten a point of its own. So yeah, we can put two points in. Well, actually, we can put points into two different things, but not uh, two into one. Okay, I'd forgotten that. Okay. And then we can just end exit by pressing I. And already we're dealing with a bit more damage. But we're still taking the same amount of damage. <laughs> oh dear. Empty and empty. And a small healing potion that we're stealing. 
And that's the rats done, it seems. You might think this is optional, but this is actually required because... Good work, Mel. Now at last I can sleep undisturbed and without a sleeping draft. Here, you take it. I won't be needing it anymore. <laughs> And out we go. Wait, and... I just realized something. Hmm? The voice actor for that character. I think the character he voice act usually looks like that. I think I'm, I, I think I might try that in a, uh, if I can get into a role play game at any point to, to try a hillbilly elf. No. Oh, Melvin, isn't that terrible? Everyone seems to blame you for what's happened in Steamer Town. All dreamers are afraid the misfortune could befall us too. Dreamer Town can't remain your home for long. I assume that Steamer Town would be a safer place for you right now. Go and try to find your father, Godon. He's a brave man and will do his best to protect you. Oh, I'm so sorry for you about all this, but let's keep a cool head. We must make sure we get you past the guards at the little gate on the northern side of Dreamer Town unnoticed. It would be easier if the guards were asleep. You've got a sleeping draft. Great! Give it to me and wait here a moment. I'll take care of the guards and then clear your way through the little back door in the city wall. Why, why do people keep saying it's a sleeping draft, even though it obviously is, is written like draught or something? I think that that's how the spell is unpronounced. It, it, it might be one of those uh, weird English things that even English people think is weird. Yeah. And while Mother goes off to uh, work the guards, we oh, have. my true love. Whenever we meet, my heart soars like a piece of paper floating on the wide ocean. Never before have I seen a woman as wonderful as you. Oh, my beloved admirer. You always say such wonderful, exciting things to me. I am thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ferna, but no one can leave the city now. What are you doing here at this hour, anyway? Oh, I couldn't sleep, so I thought, why not pay a little visit to the city guards? Um, I was also wondering if you guys would like something to drink. Thank you, Ferna. That's really very kind of you. Again, I can't say if the voice acting in some of these parts is just absolutely hilarious or absolutely horrible, or both. Oh, my love. Oh, my honey bunch. I think Melvin's going to throw up at this rate. I think those two voice actors there have done that kind of voice acting before together a lot in the back in the day. Or asleep. Here. Take this magic dreamer cube as a memento of me. Now hurry and look after yourself. My thoughts will always be with you, my beloved son. Yep, and now all we need to do to finish up here is head to the gate and get the hell out before we get lynched. Oh dear. Activate the marker again, just in case. <laughs> but that, that would be uh, awkward if they do kill him and he just pops up right back at, at his home. And I went to, I went to the completely com uh, wrong corner. I just suggest a note of fourth wall yoke. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Not really, just being, well, dumb. Where is that? Okay, this... 
Up oh, there we go. Let him sleep. Plants were dying as he passed by, really. <sighs> and now we're stuck. So this is Steamer Town, my father's hometown. Looks as if it might take some getting used to but nowhere near as bad as the dreamers always describe it. But first I must find my father. I'm really excited about getting to know him properly at last. The CTI is rough, but I still like it. it it's probably uh, helps my taste or help decide my taste in animation and such quite a bit. Because I, I do not, not mind it that it ro looks rough. It's, it's actually mildly rough. It's not too bad, really. For yeah. 2,000 standards, it's actually good, I say. Who are you? You don't look like a proper steamer. But you're welcome anyway, because right now we need all the help we can get. If you ever need a room, try the steaming horse. Just turn right at the next fork in the road. I think I just got a, a, a hidden joke that they have with... Uh... <laughs> The, the blowhard back in steamer, yeah, not steamer, in Dreamer Town. What? Uh, you know, one of the things that they uh, that people call just uh, absolutely completely fictitious uh, stories. Oh, uh, a lot of hot <laughs> so, air. No, different. Uh, that also works, but a bit different. He was telling tall tales at the steaming horse. So, uh, he was telling a load of steaming horse shit. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible. A short time ago, an earthquake shook our city, and since then, we have been attacked by monsters. It's really dangerous here, and we need help. Above all, our smith is up to his ears in it. I'm sure he would be grateful for any help. He lives just over there on the left. And yeah, Steamer Town is going to be an open area, just like you know, Dreamer Town for a bit. Though yeah, we don't actually know the place here, so the map isn't actually filled in, which is a nice little touch, if you ask me. Huh? Okay, I can see what you mean. They kind of look like dwarfs, do. I would say they are like a bit taller than dwarfs. Yeah. Did you meet traitors on the way here? Due to all the damage in the city, we need many things very urgently. For everyday items, the shop run by Lars, our local shopkeeper, is a good bet. It's opposite the steaming horse. Well, those are some like naive or Scandinavian. Yeah. Uh, hmm, I thought you could jump over here somewhere. It's probably just the fence here. Uh, I think I only heard Grim Hilda as a fantasy name. I never met it. Let me tell you about the Hilda. terrible day when Sorry, the ground suddenly shook and the incarnation of evil crept out of the depths of the earth in many forms to destroy our beautiful city. 
At the time, I was so paralyzed with fear at the sight of the gruesome destruction that Godon, one of the bravest among us, had to rescue me by pulling me back into his house. Not only did he save my life, but he warned us weeks before the catastrophe that strange things were happening underground. Okay, the plot thickens. Oh dear. Pigs and she gets. Have you met Philo? He's one of our engineers, although he's usually asleep because he's doing so many night shifts lately. But when he's awake, he's hardly ever seen without an oil can or screwdriver in his hand. In any case, it's great fun to pull his leg. Leave his leg alone. And. Yeah, this will come into play later. Can we actually interact with it right now to have a look at it? There's a hole in the pipe. It must be blocked up. Although it might not look like it at the moment, steam machines are our speciality. Only right now, there's the problem that several of our pipelines have leaks, so the steam is escaping. The holes must be closed up, as they threaten the energy supply to the whole city. The power station is also overloaded. Have you had experience with such matters? Does he look like he has experience with such matters? I'm pretty sure the only experience we have with steam is the blowhard. Yeah, yeah, you're not... She's the tallest person we met so far. <laughs> Hello and welcome! Do you want to buy something? And yeah, now we also have access to shops. And yeah, ma a, magic, a magic cube that increases your strength for 50 gold coins. It's actually also what uh, Perna gave us. And hello. Twenty-five gold for a cork? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. We can just. I call rip off. His quarters, and we we don't get to steal his actual quarters, as in the coin. <laughs> and okay, Break in entry, eh? No, not really. You know, we are breaking, but it's not really breaking in. And yeah, these little crystals, uh, they're health and mana pickups, depending on the color. Okay. And yeah, she is taller, so I was wrong about <laughs> the height thing. That stopped it. As Good easy way. as that. She did look odd. Maybe she's glitch. Eh, maybe. Okay. Yeah, we're going. We're going to need to plug up a bunch of holes in the pipelines. So we need to find quirks wherever we can. Hello there. Would you like something to eat? Tumpo's cooking his famous stew over there in the kitchen. I think I remember what's Not going to happen Not too many here. steamers come into our place at the moment, but my feeling is that even the end of the world would be more bearable if it happened during a cozy gathering with friends. Anyway, why don't we share a plate of Tumpo's delicious stew? Tumpo? Nothing there. Uh, yeah, we're, I believe we're going to need to help with making this stew. Uh, let's see, another one here. Yep, some coins. And let's see. Magic cube, used by item, increase your constitution value. And yeah, it went up by one. I, we can find cubes like that for well, all four of our stats. Now, my boy, 
Would you like a portion of my famous steamer stew? An excellent choice. A half pint like you needs something substantial to eat. Wait here. I'll come right back with a steaming plate of stew for you. And yeah, as you can see, it has a shine to it, so... Come I and love it too. Tomorrow the same will surely do. <laughs> what? And also, did you just dance? Voila. No one cooks like I do. Mm. What an aroma. Wonderful. Delicious. Here's your stew. Bon appetit! And if you enjoy it, spread the word! So that's a big ass fucking <laughs> spoon or ladle, whatever that is. Yeah, th that's a ladle, yeah. You've you never seen them that big? A pot full of ingredients for a stew. It's dangerous to leave food cooking unsupervised. Hint, hint. <laughs> yeah. I have done that mistake uh, in the past, as I recommend to people that do keep an eye on the food. Yeah, otherwise you'll be waiting even unless, longer to get to eat. Yeah, unless you're absolutely sure you're able to do something away from it. Very short time. By the great spring washer! Do not go to the scrapyard on any account! There is something big, rusty, and squeaky out there. Strangely, though, it doesn't seem to leave the scrapyard. They also say that it throws screws if you go near it. Uh, by the Great Spring Watcher? What? <laughs> washer. <laughs> yeah, washer. Wait, what did I say? By, by the Great Spring Washer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I said then. <laughs> Oh dear. dear. He does sound like he has some screws loose himself, though. Oh, oh come on. Standing up, sleeping. Um, his name he used to be a kid slave for ugly in Sweden. <laughs> A cork? I wonder how I could use it. <laughs> okay, that wakes him up and gets him to move over. We grab that and we move out of sight. On my engineer's honor, isn't a hard-working man allowed to have his midday sleep in peace anymore? Now then, boy, get out of my house and please give me back the oil can! Yeah, this is a short uh, stealth bit. But it, it probably would have been... So if I just kept walking, that probably would have solved that. Oh dear. Um, so, whilst he's still sleeping, let's go through these. Empty. And there's nothing here except for a hiding spot. Oh. On my engineer's honor. Okay, didn't think he'd be able to spot oh, us no. that. <laughs> Out. From that far away there. Okay. So, we get to this, throw it, wait for him to pass by, grab it, and there we go. We got an oil can, though what we need that for, and we'll have to figure out still. But let's just get out before he finds us again, and takes it again. Oh dear. Wow, you really pulled Fulo's leg. I didn't know that half dreamers like you had a sense of humor as well. So how do you know that? 
Okay, let's head over here. This is the smithy. Hello! You're the spitting uh, image of a friend of mine. Are you Melvin, Godon's son? Do you know when he isn't philosophizing about history, you are his favorite topic of conversation? You'll find your father's house near the old oil drilling tower. Just follow the village road towards Steamer Park. Um... His... His model looks horrible. <laughs> I think he's the only design I can criticize so far. Uh, on like, this or? On that. You, <laughs> look at him. Yeah, like, he, he that... looks like he's made out of rubber. Yeah, he looks like some weird rubber baby or something. Our last visitor here in Steamer Town was a complete idiot. He managed to blow up the miner's equipment shed where the dynamite was stored. Since that day, poor Barris has had to guard the new shed. Sirandon, oh no, uh, Sirandoran, that was the name of the dreamer genius. It really looks as though dreamers have nothing more than hot air between their pointed ears. Uh, dear. Uh, yeah, the prejudices go back and forth between these people. That stopped it. As okay. Hmm. Yeah, and I, that guy just made things worse. Oh, please, please, promise me you'll go into the mine to search for my beloved husband, Rumtalk. He is a miner, and two days ago, after his shift, he didn't return. He's probably only injured, but so far no one has had the courage to enter the mine and look for him. But you're made of sterner stuff, aren't you? You're saying to the twig in town. Uh, Seriously, does Melvin look like he'd even push of stone? I wonder, is rum talk related to our rum? <laughs> what do you want here, Greenhorn? No one is allowed into the miner's shed. That's why I'm here. We store dynamite in there and other dangerous substances. Things that inexperienced people like you shouldn't be allowed anywhere near. We've got enough problems here already. Ah, stew! Delicious. I love stew. I just can't get enough of it. Why don't you just let me enjoy it in peace? Okay. Believe me, not even ten pop-ops would persuade me to enter the mine again. I'm really worried about Rumtalk's disappearance. He didn't come back after his shift. Let's hope nothing terrible has happened. Anyway, he's an experienced miner. You might have already noticed, but whoever is talking also has the uh, blue uh, shadow underneath them. That's gonna really good. Hope alone is not enough for me. I'm going to Tumpo's place to try and organize a search party. So you know where to find me. What accent is that? Mm, what is it? Is, is the parrot whispering something to you? Sorry about that, someone coming in to talk. 
All right. I was wondering what was going on in your end. I saw you turn around and staring at the pallet very intensely. I'll stay here in case Rumtok finds his own way out of the mine. You shouldn't enter the mine without really good weapons. Really good weapons, eh? Uh, one thing I'll say right now about the weapons, it, they are a bit uh, uninteresting. In that, whenever you find a new one, it's automatically better than whatever you had before. Alright, pretty st 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 straightforward. Streamlined. Barris the guard uh. is always hungry. The simplest way to make friends with him is to give him something to eat. Getting on the right side of Barris means filling his ever grumbling tummy. Stew is his favorite food. Yeah, we already kind of figured that part out. <laughs> My Aunt Nanda recently had a nervous breakdown. Her beloved husband, Rumtok, has apparently disappeared in the depths of the mine. Some say he was caught in an aftershock, and others believe that his escape route was cut off. Since Nanda learned of it, she hasn't slept a wink. Ouch. Oh dear, yeah, I, I can't stand her. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Hot stuff coming through. Oh. <laughs> There's a hole in the pipe. Okay, we're out of corks, but we know where one of the holes is now. Last year, a few friends and I poured castor oil into the wedding feast of this sourpuss waitress because she once threw us out. We just wanted to get some revenge. It was a huge success, and she never found out it was us. The poor chef. Since that day, Tumpo's reputation as a cook has been ruined, and hardly anyone eats at the steaming horse anymore. Come on. Oh, come on. That... You didn't mean that, but that they... yeah. Seriously? Uh. Have a look <laughs> at our house. Burned completely to the ground. And nowhere in this town is there enough water to quench the fires, let alone cool the power station. Normally the water supply is no problem at all, because we have a network of pipelines feeding the city. But now the pump at the reservoir has failed. We must get it working again as quickly as possible. Right, that was the same. Those guys were damn petty. Especially they're gonna ruin... Like, they didn't just target her. They target the, the one she works with. Yeah. Do you know Tampo, the cook from the Steaming Horse? He prepared my wedding breakfast because I used to work there. But you can't imagine what a disaster that was. Three hours after the meal, everyone felt sick, and it ended with me having to wash the floor on my wedding day. What a great start to a marriage. I would never eat there again. Well, it's the only place in town that actually sells food, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, enjoy your long fasting time, then. You are not authorized to enter food. this part of Steamer Town. And if I recall correctly, that's the scrapyard over there. And hello, <laughs> kid, kitty. An old kitty. And wait, old what's the rocks? Funny cat is sitting on the highest platform of the old oil drilling tower, and refuses to come down again. Its meowing is driving me mad. <laughs> okay, that's a different okay. spelling. <laughs> Um, okay, now, now we know, know that, uh, that the cat is, is funny, okay. And I was to ask, is the good home with a gun? Uh, let's see. It's, I it think it's a pickaxe. But his waist. I said the guard. Now, the, he also seems to have a pickaxe. Uh... 
Yeah, that's a belt buckle up front. And yeah. he has... Wait, he, he the... has two axes? Two pickaxes? Okay. Uh, yeah, getting the cat is one of the objectives we think, or one of the quests that we need to do, I think. And if I can get on here and get, manage to get a freaking it? simple jump done, we might actually make some progress on that. Yeah, the platforming in this game can be a bit annoying at times. There go. Erp, yeah, jumping and then moving also works. Okay. Yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Come on, Melvin. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on, Helian. <laughs> now, that he dies from a fall like that. Th then again, uh, in reality, a fall like that would be l or could be lethal, but still. <laughs> Okay, just line the camera up. Is, uh, wait, what? We got the cat without getting close. Oh. Yay? <laughs> well, that was easy. Okay. And totally a glitch of some sort. Finally. Thank the great steam hammer. Someone has taken pity and rescued Orox's cat from the tower. I must say, I do like the portraits that they have for the characters. Oh, they definitely made some good ones. Occasionally, we have had to deal with monsters in the past, but never as many as since the quake. There are hundreds now, waiting underground to attack us when it gets dark. So it's very dangerous to go about alone at night. In particular, you should avoid the graveyard, because it is said to be haunted by ghosts as well. Yeah. well? Some voice actors are better than the others here. Yeah. This must be my father's house. Hmm. It looks abandoned. The door's locked. I can't get in without a key. How can you tell that it looks abandoned if you can't look inside? Good question, and I accidentally dropped it earlier. What were you to say? Um, I've forgotten now. Oh, well. Uh, what is well, this place? Oh, yeah. I guess I can use the bong stick to help you remember. <laughs> Today and forever, beloved husband, now you control the machine. Okay. Rest in peace, Lintos. Yeah, no funny lines like in Monkey Island? To my beloved husband, now you are with the great machine. Rest in peace, Gastor. Uh, Gastor. And rest forever, wreath and gentle steam. Okay. So if you want funny lines on graveyard, you should play the first. Uh, oh, but well, probably uh, several of the sacred games, which are also made in Germany. Yep. <laughs> Because like RPGs it, love just making uh, funny lines on headstones. Basically, every I think I think almost every headstone there was a meme. I I it took me years to realize that uh, they even made a Cthulhu reference is one of the first graveyards you run into. Uh, Pentate Cthulhu is buried there in the sacred one. All right. Um, let's see. <laughs> I believe it's a joke. Oil can, Rockus cat. Empty soup plate. So, very yellow cat. I don't think yeah. I see a cat to be that yellow. Uh, who did we bring it to, though? Uh, is there any house that we've skipped? Uh, have we even talked to one called Ulrike? Uh, Ulrike? I'm not sure. Oh, we haven't gone in here. During the night, when the fighting began, we quickly turned this house into a hospital. It wasn't easy, but we've now been able to treat most of the injured. 
Are you injured too? Your ears look a bit battered. Do you need help? Uh, no, <laughs> please leave my ear ears alone. I'm so worried. Our children are still playing out there in the scrapyard, and people say it's still so dangerous there. The children just love playing in all the scrap, but I'm worrying myself half to death about them. They say there's something squeaking in there, and the area is so isolated. Do you think you could persuade my children they had better play at home? Okay, yeah. This is concerning. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, kids are always like that. You tell them something they can't do, and they specifically go out to do that because, yeah, what you're gonna do? So this uh, is a big ass house. I just don't Depends understand the kid. why the nurses didn't want to let me go. Apparently, I wasn't well enough, but I feel absolutely great. By the way, since you're a half dreamer. Do you know a certain Siren Doran? Just before the catastrophe, we had to throw the idiot out of Steamer Town. From what I can see, dreamers only ever mean trouble. Yeah, man. One idiot doesn't speak for everyone. I wonder how I could use it. Well, maybe we can use it to shut this guy up, but no. Oh dear. No. If my sense of direction isn't failing me, then the last leak should be around here. Yep, there it is. That stopped it. As easy as that. And I think... No, oh, there's still more. Okay. Scrapyard riddle. Save Rumtok the miner. Try to get past bearers. Gain access to your father's house. Hmm. That means that there's another leak somewhere. And another cork to be found. Let's start over here because here's where one of the pipes ends. Well, a bunch of them. Let's see. That one ends there. This one just goes around and ends here. Then we can follow this one all around town to see where the last leak might be. And I'm not talking about the vegetable. Hmm. No I had there. to buy one today. <laughs> but not for myself, but for my mother. All right. And she, I was before we came to the industry today, they now just short ago, just went out to get water. And she faintly again and said it was the best leak she had in a while. Okay. So I, by pure chance, picked a, picked a good one. <laughs> Says I don't know how, what's, what makes a good leak good. And apparently it was extra l large, so she has plenty more, which surprised her. Let's see, is there any leak over here? No. But it is kind of completely broken, so I don't think a quark is going to fix that. Hmm. What about a pig? We still have no water to extinguish the fires. Whatever it was that affected the pump mechanism at the reservoir, it must have done some really serious damage. Yeah, they're lucky these fires aren't spreading any further. Even if I had to go without food for weeks on end, I wouldn't need another thing in Tumpo's place. Anyway, luckily we won't ever starve here, because we all keep chickens and pigs. Yeah, we've noticed. <laughs> Let's see... He's the one that complained about the cats. I would give a lot for a bag of new tools, but there are limits. No power of the machines, however great, could persuade me to go to the scrapyard. And you? In the graveyard? Holy piston, it's haunted there. You won't find me there until I'm dead myself. <laughs> All right. Hmm. I'm sure we can persuade Helian to go there. 
Now we already were there just earlier. But yeah, we have the mine there, we have the crypt there, and well, the blocked off entry there. The park is this way, but the guard wouldn't let us pass. Um, maybe they will now? Probably not, but still worth a shot. You are not authorized to enter this. Nope. All right then. Uh, let's check the crypt again then. And if that's a dead end, uh, literally and figuratively, we'll head for the mine. See if we can go in there. Oop. They flipped us around, so we almost left again. A uh, low flying bird means only one thing. Rain. Bellas may rest at the side of the great machine. Life given for steam, sleep peacefully, my faithful, uh, faithful wife. Wait, the, the worship machine? Oh dear, it's the tech priest. <laughs> okay. Are there really Are the no other holes in these things? Are you sure this is not a 40k game? <laughs> uh, if it was, then it was age, it, it'd likely be Age of Sigmar. Oh, that burns! That burns! I'll punk you later for that. Okay, can we go in here? We actually can, okay. Torches will light your way in the dark. They will light automatically when it's dark. But you should make sure that you always have some with you. You can either find them or buy them from traders. Though so it isn't too dark, so we can go without for the moment. Oh. Uh. Family of yours? Um... Uh. I think those might be salamanders. Fantasy salamanders. Yep. Ooh, torch. Wait. Uh, cousin! Okay, uh, some healing. Yeah, we re we should keep an eye on our health because you it doesn't regenerate like in other games. Oh, hello there. Oh, there. Uh, what? what is that? Um, yeah, not sure myself. <laughs> I'd completely forgotten about those. Uh, what's that a troll? Uh, more like some sort of orc or goblin. Like hobgoblin. Yep. Sneaky little... Ah, oh, right, they keep spawning from those things, I believe. Okay, use a few. Okay. Hmm. Can we collapse these? No, okay, that might be a bit of a problem, though we could also just try and farm some experience from them. There was a fireball there, but I wrote, did it, I don't see a salamander. Wait, hold on. Did it glitch? It, it glitched up into the air. <laughs> it's trying to become a dragon. Okay, there was an elevator at the back, so this isn't a dead end yet. But let's just keep going because these things are just going to keep uh, spawning, it seems. Uh, by the way, you wanna know how big the biggest salamander may have been? Mm, how big then? Th five uh, feet? Uh, just for a heads up, it's, uh, it's extinct. Uh, 
about the size of a nine crocodile. <laughs> so and, really big. Yeah, and it survived <laughs> up to the Cretaceous, and it was an ancestor from the early amphibians. And it survived. It's the ruined area that survived in the sense crocodiles are competing in all, all areas is in Antarctica. <laughs> Okay, yeah. It, I need to stop moving for a bit before I can s start attacking with the mouse. So I think I'm I'm going to stop with that and just fight like this. Hello? Yeah. Is anybody there? Again, three plus. Dear. Right. I was gonna say the, the was settlement is named. Is anybody there? Yeah. Go on. Uh, let's say the salamander's name is Kulasukus, or as Gavin Bivinik named it as Kool Aid. I'm not quite sure where that sound came from. Uh, that's pretty obvious. Well, I guess we really should go help them then, since they're underage. Uh, minor, not minor! <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's activate this thing. And... Oh, might as well grab this as well. Yep, just some chalk. And... Yeah, we'll have to call it there, because we've passed two hours. So... Save... There... So, what, what do you think so far? Impressive! Yeah, I'm, I'm rather surprised with how stable it's actually being. Yeah, like, yeah, sure, we have found some glitches with the salamanders. <laughs> but beside it, it's surprisingly smooth. Especially yeah. considering how much stronger we had earlier before we to cooperate with the stream. Uh, yeah, that that was actually because I somehow got us moved into the tests, the stream test scene, instead of the main streaming scene. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be pretty fun, especially with it being a lot more cooperative within uh, Beyond Good and Evil, because that took a lot of work to get working as well, and even then we had frame rate issues here and there. Uh, which I hopefully uh, didn't ruin too much about the game. It, it's it's still a very good game, even with that. And this one, I personally think, is pretty good as well. This would be a game I feel like could do well with a remake or something, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, the question would be, uh, who owns the copyright? Yeah, if anyone sense. at all, with how old this game is. It, it was released by Infograms, so whoever owns them uh, probably has the rights. Alright. Let's hope it's not something they just forgotten about. Yeah, there's many of these old games uh, that were released in Europe alone that have been forgotten, sadly, but it still works like this. And I can still show it around. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this has been the first stream of Technomage Return of Eternity. And we will be continuing with this next week. Um, on Saturday, we should hopefully be finally be able to start with Tales of Monkey Island. And we'll see what we'll do on Sunday. I've got a few games lined up for that. Uh, I just need to test them still. Though I do have a bit of news now. Um, my job training... My job training is apparently shorter than I actually expected. So I, th I thought it would be two months. Uh, instead, it's just a single month. So after next week is when my schedule is likely to go, well, go wild or unpredictable at the very least. So, yeah, we'll have to see if and when I can uh, stream in in the weeks following that because the schedule has to be made in advance so i should be able to get a look at uh, which days i might and might not be able to stream 
I'm going I'll I'll try to go for two streams every week still but it might just be that some weeks I might be able to stream only once I if needed I'll I'll look on into streaming on Monday and Wednesday and Friday though I'll, I'll try to avoid two days in a row <clears throat> But yeah, that'll be for in two weeks' time. For now, though, uh, thank you anyone who's been watching now or later, and thank you as always, Drakir. You're most welcome, my friend. And yeah, like I said, uh, Tales of Monkey Island on Saturday, hopefully. Uh, showcase Sunday, and more Techno Maids next week. Yay! So until then, thank you again for watching and until then, have a nice day. And yeah, until then. Be safe, folks, and watch out for the seagulls you will be soon seeing. <laughs>